patterns. In this video, I will show you the most common patterns of logic you can find in a matrix across its rows, columns, and diagonals. In this example, the logic here is governed by the change in color, fill, and pattern of the shapes throughout the matrix. If we take a look at our 159 diagonal, we can see that all three of these elements share the same pattern. They are horizontal stripes. If we look to the rest of our groups of three that are present in a 159 diagonal, we should see that elements two, six, and seven also share a pattern, this kind of polka dot pattern. And then the last group of three, elements three, four, and eight, all share a solid black fill, solid black color, solid black pattern. Sometimes the underlying logic can govern how many shapes or features are present in each element. Some common examples of this include changes of the number of edges of any given shape, the number of curved versus straight lines, the number of shapes within or outside of other shapes, and the number of lines. In this example, the number of shapes is governed by the logic of our rows and the logic of our columns. If we take a look at the logic of our rows, we can see that the same number of shapes is present in each element throughout the entire row. In the top row, there are five shapes in each element. In the middle row, there are four shapes in each element. And in the bottom row, there are three shapes in each element. From top to bottom in each of our columns, we are removing one of the white shapes. So if we start in our left column, between the first and second element of the column, we are getting rid of one of the white elements, not that one, the top right one. And then we get rid of the other remaining white element between the second and third elements of that column. Same thing is true of column two. We get rid of the right white element, and then we get rid of the last remaining white element. And again in column three, eliminate the one on the right, eliminate the one on the left. Rotations and flips are very common logic patterns. Usually the entire element will rotate in the same direction, but it is possible for only certain parts of the element to rotate or for different parts of the same element to be rotating in two different ways. In these type of matrix problems, the elements can either be rotated clockwise or counterclockwise. Clockwise is if you were to look at the face of a clock and watch the way the hands naturally move around the clock. If you started from the top, they're moving to the right, down and around the clock. That is clockwise. So if you were to rotate something kind of towards the right side, that would be clockwise. Counterclockwise would be if the hands of the clock moved the opposite way they were supposed to. If you started from the top of the clock, went to the left, down and around, that would be counterclockwise. Rotations can also be done in different degrees. So if I were to take this triangle, the three most common rotations are 45 degrees, which looks like that, 90 degrees, which looks like this, and 180 degrees, which looks like this. You can also do something that is called a flip, and flips can be both horizontal and vertical. Let me zoom out just a little bit. A horizontal flip would look like this, and a vertical flip would look like this. Sometimes it's very easy to confuse flips with 180 degree rotations because again I'll show you this triangle up here when we rotated it 180 degrees it looks about the same as a 180 degree flip. So what you have to do in questions like this where they ask you um, where you're trying to debate whether it is a 180 degree rotation or a flip um, is just really pay attention to the shape, pay attention to any special patterns or shading that could clue in whether it was flipped as if it was looking in a mirror or if it was rotated. In this example, the rotation of the elements is governed by the logic of our columns. If we take a look at each column from top to bottom, we can see that each element is being rotated 90 degrees clockwise. If I take the first element in column one and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, it matches the element right below it. If I take that next element and rotate it another 90 degrees, it now matches the uh, element right below it in the same column. If we do the same thing for the second column, first element rotated 90 degrees matches the second element of the column. Second element of the column rotated 90 degrees again matches the third element of the column. And the same thing will be true in column three. The first element rotated 90 degrees matches the second element. 
the second element rotated 90 degrees will match the third element. Whoops, the third element. Sometimes the underlying logic can govern how aspects of the elements may move or change. Some common examples of this are shapes getting closer together or farther apart, shapes increasing or decreasing in size, shapes appearing or disappearing, shapes moving within the frame of the elements, and shapes becoming thicker or thinner. In this example, there are two different types of movement affecting the elements. From left to right in our rows, the black area in each element is expanding to the right and covering up the gray area. So from left to right in each of our rows, black is slowly becoming the more dominant color and pushing that gray color away. From top to bottom in our columns, parts of the shape are disappearing. First, we're getting rid of this top right corner, as you can see here, and then we are getting rid of some of the bottom right corner and some more of that top left corner to give us our third element in each column. The same is true for all of the other elements. First get rid of this corner, then get rid of a little bit from either side, and you will get the shape in the third element. And same is true for our third column as well. The shape within each element may change in various ways. The entire shape itself could change, like a circle becoming a square. The structure of the lines may change, like a solid line becoming a dotted line or a very thick line becoming a thin line. And the ending of these lines could change, like an arrowhead becoming a bullet point or the line may end in nothing at all. In this example, all of the elements in each column are the same shape. In the first column, we have circles. In the first, oh, excuse me, in the middle column, we have squares. And in the third column, we have pentagons. Each row is changing the format of each of these shapes. The middle row is the original shape, unaltered. The top row is compressing the shapes, making them shorter and a bit wider, while the bottom row is stretching the shapes, making them taller and a bit thinner.